Heritage on RFD-TV is brought to you by Rural Heritage Magazine, borrowing from yesterday to do the work of today. For subscription information, please call 319-362-3027 or order online at www.ruralheritage.com. In 1909, a northern Indiana farmer named Lawrence Armfield decided to build a barn. In selecting what kind of barn to build, Lawrence studied the research coming out of nearby Purdue University that suggested round barns were more economical and durable than their rectangular counterparts. That barn served the Armfield family over the years, outlasting many others that eventually fell prey to fires, tornadoes, or general decay. By the late 1970s, the Armfield Barn was the only round barn left standing in Howard County, Indiana. The lumber used for the barn came from nearby woods. It was the use of native trees that contributed to the barn's longevity, according to Lawrence's grandson, Dale. Like a lot of men of his day, Lawrence Armfield was a skilled and capable craftsman, said Dale, who remembers hearing about how Lawrence laid out the building site with a stake and some twine. He took the stake and fire twine, made three shovels out the field. And you can come to the tree and we're 160 feet down from it. we build. As their children grew up and moved off the farm, Lawrence's grandson Dale and his wife Mary Ruth eventually retired from farming and sold the farmyard to the Moyer family, who live there still. The Moyers used the barn for a time to store equipment and other items, but were unable to afford the kind of renovation the building needed to be preserved. After her husband, Junior, died in 2010, Rhonda Moyers made the difficult decision to offer the building to the Greentown Lions Club for its Pioneer Village, located at the county fairgrounds in Greentown. You know, because I knew it was the only one left in Howard County, and I, I, it has a history, and I just felt that my grandkids should be able to come home someday and say, oh, that used to be on my grandma's place, you know, that kind of thing. The Greentown Lions Club quickly developed a plan for raising funds to move the historic building to Greentown. They hired Trillium Dell Timberworks of Knoxville, Illinois, to dismantle the existing barn, preserve as much original timber as possible, and rebuild it on a new concrete pad at the north end of the Pioneer Village at the Howard County Fairgrounds. My name is Dave Eikenberry. I'm currently the fair chairman this past year and looking forward to another uh, year of chairman uh, next year for 2012. I'm also the chief operating officer for First Farmers Bank and Trust. I'm really excited about the round barn uh, and First Farmers being a part of that history getting moved to the fairgrounds. Uh, the families involved with that, the Moyers and the Armfield family, has been outstanding to help and uh, just give us a, a little background of the history of that. And it's been tremendous to see the outpour, uh, not only from our bank, but from the rest of the individuals around the community to get excited about the project. Now it's on the fairground, actually seeing it uh, built uh, back up uh, with our fair this past uh, couple weeks ago. It was great to see the number of people just stopping by and taking a look at that and, and providing support from manual labor to actual donations that we have and continue to get in for the project. So it's really exciting for our town to uh, see this uh, getting moved to the fairground. Greentown Lions Club you know, has a lot of functions that they do to support the community. And the largest uh, function that we do to support the community is the Howard County 4-H Fair. Uh, and at the Howard County 4-H Fair, we, we take the proceeds and uh, use them to improve the facilities as well as donate to cancer control and many other organizations with, like diabetes in our local hospitals, scholarships, speech and hearing. And uh, this particular project, the Round Barn, was actually thought of around 1986 and 1987 by two gentlemen by the name of Hubert Ball and Melvin Hall. In 1987, 
uh, the Fair Planning Committee at that time established uh, what we call now is the Pioneer Village. This year being the 25th anniversary of the Pioneer Village, uh, the Fair Planning Committee and the Pioneer Village Chairman, Bill Johnson, uh, felt it was appropriate to try to get the round barn here from the Moyer and Armfield families. And due to their kindness of offering that to us in the past, uh, we were able to uh, get the Greentown Lions Club to chip in and, and help get the project started. Then we had other sponsors, uh, First Farmers Bank and Trust and Central Indiana Ethanol Farm Bureau Incorporated, Farm Credit Services and North American Entertainment all chipped in to help get the project going right from the get-go. So, uh, what you have seen today of the barn is, is how far we have progressed and we hope to have the barn finished by next year's fair and the Howard County 4-H fairs is like the third or fourth largest county fair in the state of Indiana and uh, due to the fact that our people of our community have supported our fair over the years and have things like the Pioneer Village and uh, we, we just can't thank the people of our community enough for supporting our fair and supporting our 4-H members and, and all of our Lions Club members, we have around 180 Lions Club members. And uh, this entire fair is put on by our Lions Club members and they all donate their time. And we all donate our time because we believe in 4-H and for what it stands for. And we feel like it is important to preserve our history and, and let all the people of our community come to our fair and see what it was like years ago. And I know in the future, we'd like to see a bank. Uh, we'd like to see a jail. And uh, maybe by that time, we can come out here and arrest you, Joe, and uh, put you in the jail and then we'll bail you out. We published our first draft horse wall calendar over 40 years ago. And every year since, we've found the most interesting and beautiful photos of a variety of draft horse breeds performing a wide assortment of activities, from hauling families on a sleigh ride to feeding cattle, performing before an appreciative crowd, or preparing a seedbed for planting. Our photos capture the power and grace of these gentle giants. Made in the USA of the best materials, these calendars are wire-bound to lay flat against the wall and feature large date squares for recording important events or appointments. They're only $16.95 postage paid. Prices go down as you buy more. Visit www.ruralheritage.com or call toll-free 1-877-647-2452. That's www.ruralheritage.com or 1-877-647-2452. 4-H is important because it makes, uh, helps to make strong leaders out of children. Uh, gives them a sense of uh, ownership and responsibility by doing different projects. 4-H uh, has always been strong in this community for as long as I can remember. Uh, the cool thing about the fair is it brings the community together. Uh, it's a gathering place for lots of folks that ha you haven't seen for since the last fair. Uh, lots of people just come to the fair to see their friends or to eat the food or to see the projects. Um, Most county fairs in this state are supported by tax dollars. Mm -hmm. uh, the local government helps support the fair. Uh, this is one of the very few, if not the only one in the state that's uh, sponsored by a, a, a private organization or a, like the Lions Club and we we do the supporting we don't get tax dollars to support the fair and I think that's one of the things that's made it really successful because it's got the community's got a lot more ownership in it and uh, a lot more pride um, and a lot of the counties around the people come from lots of counties around that to help support it so I've noticed uh, <clears throat> that this uh, fair is a homecoming time for a lot of families, uh, kids who move away, uh, choose the fair week to come back uh, to be with their family and again to, because they know a lot of their friends will be at the fair, um, it, so it's a, a big, big reunion place. When the Greentown Lions Club had a dream of the round barn for the 25th anniversary, we knew it was going to be rather expensive. The club could only put in so much money, and so as our fair planning committee uh, started talking, 
uh, one of our, our fair chairman this year happens to be the vice president of the First Farmers Bank and Trust. And uh, thanks to the First Farmers Bank and Trust, uh, they kicked in a substantial amount and got the, the ball rolling with the line club. And then Central Indiana Ethanol chimed in and really got the ball rolling. And then Farm Credit, I mean, Ant Services, wanted to help as well and Farm Bureau, Howard County Farm Bureau wanted to help and so with these entities, these entities made this possible and we thank them so much and actually we can't thank them enough. Well the first time that I was approached about the Round Barn project, uh, I was incredibly excited about our ability to participate in something that would add to the cultural and educational value of agriculture in central Indiana. Uh, Pioneer Village has, has really been a great representation of uh, the historical impact of agriculture in this area and the Round Barn project was certainly uh, fit well with that goal and was absolutely uh, something our organization wanted to be a part of and wanted to get the ball rolling and started in the efforts. We generally uh, choose our sponsorship and uh, generosity efforts through youth projects and education projects and the uh, Greentown Fair and the Round Barn and the Pioneer Village encompasses all of that and we uh, we intend to do everything we can to continue to educate and support the youth growing up in the this neighborhood. Barns have been a fascination uh, for me for a long time. Having seen the King and Barn down in the northwest section of Marion County, I think it is in Indianapolis, and then when uh, knowing where this barn was and it came up to uh, a discussion at our board meeting, it was a no-brainer for me preserving part of history for Howard County. Like Paul said, uh, when it was brought up at our board meeting about supporting this project, uh, we all felt that it was a, uh, a very good project to help preserve the history of our community and uh, leave a legacy for the young people many years to come. That uh, may have never seen a round barn and won't unless there's something preserved like this and, and kept for history. So uh, it's a uh, very good uh, project and will be used and uh, appreciated for many years to come. I grew up on a farm in Davies County. We had a round barn and we raised cattle and had cattle in it and it's no longer there. And uh, preserving this round barn is uh, good for history to have something to remind folks of you know what it was in the old days. At Central Indiana Ethanol representing the past of, ag of agriculture such as the Round Barn, uh, the present of agriculture who we're doing business with today and the future of agriculture uh, being the 4-H uh, as well as the Howard County 4-H Fair are three areas that we want to uh, to support with the future of agriculture not only being our future customers uh, but also our future employees. We want to educate and have the opportunity for our children to see where our heritage has come from um, historically uh, and that's where the Round Barn and the Pioneer Village plays a big part of, of what the Howard County 4-H Fair is right here in, in Howard County right in our neighboring area where we originate a lot of the corn that we utilize at our facility in Marion. Hi, I'm Mark Everling, Greentown Lions President. Um, I had a long history here in Greentown uh, growing up in the farming community. Both my grandparents were farmers um, and I went to 4-H, grew up doing 4-H here in Howard County and at this fair. Um, there's a lot of heritage. Um, every one of our members has some heritage to this to this area. Um, I, I can't tell you the the great aspiration of having uh, the only round barn left in Howard County come to our fairgrounds and to share it with the community. Um, as Lions we are devoted to serving our community and this is one way that we can serve them in a uh, hands-on approach especially our, our youth that will never would never see a round barn without this being uh, preserved. And like previous uh, people had noted, we have many county sponsors as far as banks and other private entities that 
that are donating money to see this happen and uh, we thank them very much and we also want to thank all of our Lions at, for serving not just our community but we serve internationally too and this is just one small project in community service that we we love to do. Our Lions Club uh, started in 1945 and we folded in June of 2008 which was 63 years. Uh, our money making project was a uh, fish fry trailer and pork chops. So uh, the next week I came over here and joined the Greentown Line. And I know the history of the Lions Club here. Uh, they're a great organization and uh, they've been in existence since 45 too. And uh, so in our county, I don't know around Barnes if we've got any uh, still there. But uh, I had a friend that was in Lions Club up in Chicago, and he helped restore, I think it was 14 round barns. And uh, he's passed away now. But uh, I had, was over here the other day, and they said, the guy was here walking his dog, and he said, hey, I don't look like it's very big. I said, it's bigger inside than you think it is. And these young kids, and all this machinery and stuff here at the fairground, Pioneer Village, they don't realize their heritage, uh, they best really by being young because uh, now uh, these big tractors and big machinery and dangerous machinery that they have. So this year gives them an idea what a heritage is and how their parents and their grandparents grew up. And so uh, I really appreciate this club and opportunity to serve. And uh, I've been a member for 45 years in Lions Club and uh, I hope to uh, continue it and be a part of the Greentown Lions Club. It's a great club. Well, like I say, this is the 25th year of our Pioneer Village, and, and what we try to do is celebrate the heritage of, of farming in Indiana and, and America. You know, the, uh, the, the way farming was done is, is uh, we enjoyed the kids being able to come out and see the way it was done years ago and, and, and all the things that are, were involved at the time. You know, it's, it, it, was a, it was a hard life, but yet it was a good life. I've been out here for 20 years now as part of the Pioneer Village and, and uh, you know, we're always looking for things to add to our Pioneer Village. And, uh, you know, this round barn is, is maybe not the crowning point, but yet it's, it's one, of the, one of the things that I've looked to do for the last 20 years. I'm very proud of being a part of this Lions Club and the things that this Lions Club does for the community. And uh, it, it's an honor when people come to our fair and talk about how, you know, the Pioneer Village is the one thing that they really look forward to every year at our fair. And it's it's something that a lot of fairs wish they had that, that uh, they, they've tried to model their fair or their Pioneer Village at their fair after ours. I'm Rick Collins with Trillium Dell Timber Works and our company specializes in the restoration of historic timber buildings or wood frame buildings. We also build new construction timber frame homes. We started this business about, uh, I started this business about 16 years ago and what we've done since then is restore barns, commercial buildings, churches, state buildings, all wood structures uh, all across the Midwest and during that time period we've also built new timber frame homes and new timber frame commercial buildings. We move buildings um, around the country as well. We operate a sawmill and have a woodworking shop where we make moldings and do things like that as well. Our shop's located in rural Illinois, western Illinois, Knoxville, and we travel all over the United States. We've taken frames as far as the Caribbean. We uh, ship new construction frames all over the country and we also move historic structures uh, across the United States as well. Crews vary from one road crew to sometimes three or four and our field crew ranges from a few people up to 20 people depending on the size of the job that we're working on. We specialize in um, unique historic structures, log buildings, barns, things like that. Sometimes there's time constraints so we have to pull together a big crew and make something happen. We have mostly skilled labor within the company. Most of our people are fairly highly educated and have as much as uh, 10 or 15 years experience in carpentry. Extensive training. We're a part of an apprentice and journey worker program 
that's administered through the Timber Framers Guild, which is a big part of our continuing education. Most of the people that work for us have college degrees. All the unskilled labor we usually get locally. So when we travel, we usually try to source that labor from within the community that we're working in. And we specialize completely in historic structure carpentry. So when it comes to the other parts of things like roofing and siding and um, some of those things, that usually happens locally. In some cases, we've had as many as 1,500 people help for a barn raising, and we do the whole barn in a day. On average, with some of the community projects we do, we have 30 to 40 people on raising day and up to 20 people during the week prior. Um, in this particular case, most of the work's been done by Trillium Dell. And I think at this point, though, the Lions Club is going to start to take over and finish the bulk of it. Well, this particular structure had some difficulties. And one of the difficulties is utilizing the older material with the newer material. The studs are very tall. They're 18 footers. And for lack of a better word, they're a little squirrely. And so when we try to put some of that old stud work back in with newer materials, it was very difficult to try to keep the walls straight and it was difficult to keep the circumference matching at the top and the bottom. Although, as a 56 foot diameter structure, the circumference is 175 feet and some change. I can't remember at this point. But when we were complete, we were within 3 16 overall of keeping that circumference the same, top and bottom, which means that the walls are relatively plumb. And then as we go up, the same things happen with the roof. We're, we're melding old material with new material. So we're trying to get uh, the next plate ring to be level and circular. So it's a challenge working with green hardwood mixed with old wood, trying to make a round, built, you know, a round structure, which is essentially just a giant basket. And you're trying to weave all those things together and hold it together as you go. So it's a very time consuming process. Building a roof like this for the same square footage takes me eight times longer than when I build a roof for a square barn. So building round barns is very, very time consuming. It's not necessarily difficult. It's a lot like building a tent, but imagine trying to hold up a hundred little pieces as you do it. Yeah, safety's a big concern, especially with trying to build this structure over essentially um, an unsupported span. So in order to do that, what we did is build a lot of wooden scaffolding inside the building to work off of while we complete the mid-span plate ring. In the meantime, while we were building it, we used a lot of lifts. Um, originally, when these buildings were built, you essentially would have had to scaffold the entire inside of the building with wood framing, much like you would do if you were going to build a vaulted ceiling. And we're able to bypass a little bit of that, do it a little bit safer by working essentially remotely off of lifts. Um, at this point now, things are a lot safer because we got the upper plate ring. We can tie into it now for fall arrest. Um, we were also able to support the bulk of the roof using some modern bracing materials. What we use for a structure like this are the types of braces that are used to build tilt-up concrete slabs. And so they're very strong and they're adjustable. And that's basically what's holding the roof up right now. This program is available for purchase. To order your copy, please call 319-362-3027 or visit www.ruralheritage.com. Rural Heritage is a bi-monthly magazine dedicated to draft animal farming and logging, as well as other aspects of our rich rural heritage. It is published by Mishka Press, which also offers a complete line of back-to-the-land books, DVDs, and calendars, Call or write for a catalog or subscription information, or visit our website, www.ruralheritage.com, to shop online. <laughs>